hi everyone welcome to my top notch youtube channel i would like to congratulate everyone for reaching this stage for the australian citizenship exam so today i'm going to cover all the areas which is going to be tested for the australian citizenship exam which is based on the book called our common bond so hope you guys will stay throughout the video and the good uh, refreshments or the preparation for the exam where i will be discussing all the areas and i will be giving you guys example of questions which uh, where i have faced and i have done these questions as well so i'll be explaining each area for you and i'm going to uh, discuss the questions how will they're going to ask in based on each area so this hope this is going to uh, very useful for you guys so let's begin so they asked first in citizenship ceremony what do you do so in citizenship ceremony you pledge your loyalty to australia and its people so i will repeat again so in citizenship ceremony you pledge your loyalty to australia and its people so in second uh, under the section our people the Australian first inhabitants were Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders and they are the indigenous people of Australia. And these uh, Australian indigenous cultures are the oldest continuing cultures in the world. And they have lived between 40 to 60,000 years. And Aboriginal people are from mainland Australia and Tasmania. And these indigenous people have their common belief and traditions that still guide them today. They have a deep connection with the land that is expressed in their stories and their art. So from the previous which I talked about indigenous people, there can be a question like for how long have they lived? So it has to be uh, between 40,000 and 60,000 years and their beliefs as well so we still it guides them and uh, where are they from they are from mainland australia and tasmania yeah okay so now we are going to talk about the early days of european settlement so european settlement started the first 11 convict ships so if i tell it again the European settlement started when the first 11 convict ships came, which became the first fleet arrived from Great Britain on 26th January 1788. So this date, 26th January, January 1788, they came from Britain. Then they started the, uh, the European settlement. And they started the first colony from the name New South Wales. And the first governor of New South Wales was Captain Arthur Phillips. So guys, there can be a question. Actually, there was a question as I remember. Asking who was the first governor in New South Wales. So answer is Captain Arthur Phillips. Or was the first uh, colony which they went or which they started so that is New South Wales yep and early settlers are from Great Britain and Ireland so there also can be a question uh, from where the early settlers are from so the answer is going to be a Great Britain and Ireland so this British and Irish heritage has had a major influence on Australian history culture and political institution so there also can be a question asking uh, which influence on Australian history so the answer will be a British and Irish heritage so in 1851 the gold was discovered in colonies of New South Wales and Victoria so in this situation people from around the world came to uh, try their luck and make a fortune so in this time the so at this time more the largest group who came to see this gold and to try their fortune was from china 
so again i will repeat there can be a question again who was the largest uh, community or largest crowd from which country or who came to for the uh, gold rush from where so the answer is they are from china and this chinese people this largest chinese community came in this time to so to take the gold and to see their fortune so it's not from Europe who came for the gold rush. Again, I repeat, for the gold rush, the largest community who came is are, are the are the Chinese. Okay, so now we are going to talk about the nation of Australia. So over the following decades, the separate colonies discuss the idea of becoming one nation. So in nine o one or in nineteen hundred one. The colonies were united into a federation of states called the Commonwealth of Australia. So at that time, Australia's population was uh, counted at about 4 million people. And please note, in this 4 million people, they did not include the indigenous people. I will repeat. So at that time, Australian uh, population was counted as 4 million people in that the indigenous people were not counted. So I can remember there was a question asking whether those uh, 4 million people were like including aboriginals or not. So you have to remember that uh, carefully. And then I have to mention about the current population in Australia that is 25 million at the latest fingers. And if you see the practice questions online, it will go as 24,000, I'm sorry, 24 million. So, uh, they are, because those questions are not really updated, but the latest is 25 million is the latest uh, fingers with Australian uh, population. So, as every one of you know, the uh, Australian national language is English. It is a part of the Australian national identity. Um, so everyone in Australia is encouraged to learn and use English to help them participate in Australian society. And communicating in English is also important for making more living working in Australia. So other languages are also valued in Australia. There are so much of a diverse society. Over 200 languages are spoken, so there can be a question as I remember. So there is 200 languages are spoken in Australia. Okay guys, so now we are going to focus on Australia's states and its territories. So I will tell one by one the states first, uh, New South Wales and the capital city is Sydney, Victoria, the capital city is Melbourne, the Queensland, Capital city is Brisbane. Western Australia, the capital city is uh, Perth. The South Australia, the capital city is Adelaide. And Tasmania, the capital city is Hobart. And territories, we have two. That is Australia Capital Territory. The capital city there is uh, Canberra. And other one is Northern Territory. And their capital territory is Darwin. So as we go along, so then uh, we can see every uh, state has its features and things to remember which will be tested in your exam. So let me focus on that uh, features about uh, each state. Okay, so in New South Wales, the Britishers built the first colony. So that's one of the uh, things to remember in New South Wales. Also the national icons are in New South Wales. Those are the Sydney Harbour Bridge and Opera House and they are national icons. So there can be a question in there as well. And next is Victoria is the smallest mainland state in Australia. So main f many fine buildings in Victoria were built from the wealth created by the gold rush in 1850s so victoria's capital is melbourne as everyone knows so the queensland is the second largest state it has the Torres Strait islanders in the north tropical rainforest temperature coastal areas and often 
the dry in land so the fa the world famous great barrier reef runs along its streams coast the coherence is, is capacity is brisbane i mentioned earlier so that can be a questions asking where the Great Barrier Reef is run so that this answer will be Queensland. So next coming up Western Australia. So that is the largest state in Australia. So don't forget that. The east of the state is most deserted in Western Australia while southwest is rich agriculture and wine growing area. This state is home to many large mining projects. About three quarters of the state's population live in Perth, and which is the capital city of uh, Western Australia. So, in next, uh, it is South Australia, has a rough coastal line and many famous wine regions. Adelaide, so the capital city is the uh, Adelaide in South Australia, so it has many examples of fine colonial architecture, especially there are a lot of churches you can see if you go. So now I'm going to speak about the next two territories. So Australian capital territory is situated between Sydney and Melbourne. So it can, can be a question where it's situated. So, it's, so the ACT or the Australian capital territory is situated in between Sydney and Melbourne. It is side of the nation's capital city Canberra. So Canberra is home to important national institutions such as Parliament House and the High Court of Australia. So that's where uh, the those two are in so northern territory has is the top tropics in the north and the red desert soil in south most of the small population live in capital city darwin and along the main highway between darwin and alice which is the main town near center of australia so guys please remember that because there can be a questions asking from you uh, what is there in the center town in near Australia or where the people are living in northern territory or what is happening in the center town near and where is it if it is where is it you have mentioned uh, it's in the main highway between Darwin and Alice Springs so yeah okay guys now we are going to talk about the traditions and symbols important days of australians okay so um in australia the 26th january each year we celebrate the australia day so australia day is a public holiday in every state and territory in australia so hope you guys remember earlier i mentioned so in january 26th um the captain out of beliefs and those 11 11 uh, fleets uh, came so to the new south Wales, they start of first colony so so they celebrate this 26th january as the australia day so on the day the large small communities across australia celebrate all the greatest about australia and being australian is the biggest annual public event in australia so australian day is the day that we honor our Australian history and the people who have made this nation great. It is the day to rejoice the present and commit to the happy of prosper of uh, future together. For this reason, it is the day when the citizenship ceremonies are held across the country. Also, it is the anniversary of the arrival of the first fleet from Great Britain, 1788, to set up the current settlement for the British government. The commander of the first fleet was the Captain Arthur Phillips. I'm repeating that again for you to remember. Also, on the eve of Australian Day, so the in a Anzac Day, it's a, a solemn day when we remember the sacrifice of all Australians <coughs> who served and died in wars, conflicts, and peacekeeping operations. We also honor the courage and commitment of all servicemen and women. So now we are going to talk about Australian flag. So in Australian flag, you can see the United Kingdom flag on the top left corner. Now that is known as Union Jack. Is in the top left corner. So remember where's the position and location because there can be a question asking where is it. 
also this british uh, flag is also known as union jack in australian flag so union jack if someone asks what is union jack is the australian i mean sorry in british flag in the australian flag so that part known as union jack again i will repeat it's in the left corner so the flag represent the australian history of british settlement so i hope you guys remember with the british settlement uh, by uh, other ships uh, came with the 11th convict ships which is the first fleet so in the australian flag for you can see something called common west star which is under the union jack this star has seven points one point of each of the six states and one of the territories so this so common west star represent each point a states and one for the two territories also you can see on the right hand side of the flag the southern cross you can see like uh, four uh, i mean like four big stars and uh, one small stars all together five stars forming a southern cross so on the night on the night you can see it in australian um, skies so that is uh, on the right yeah and it's a good it's a group of uh, stars we see in southern skies as well so you can see the australian skies so in the southern skies so now we are going to talk about australian aboriginal flag which is uh, black red and yellow so you have to remember that because there can be a definite question in the citizenship exam asking what are the colors of the aboriginal flag and what colors represent so so now we'll see what is these three colors represent in the aboriginal flag the top half is the black and that represents the aboriginal people of australia the bottom half is red and represent the earth and spiritual relations to the land and the yellow circle in middle represent the sun so please remember these uh, three colors and, and what it represents because there there was a question for me when i was doing it so guys please remember so okay so then and other flag is the Torres Strait islanders flag so this flag has green blue black and white and now we see what represent each color so the green stripes represent the land the blue panel in the center represent the sea the black line represent the Torres Strait Islanders people the white dancers headdress is the center in the flag you can see is symbol of Torres Strait Islanders the point of point of white star represent the islanders groups in the Torres Strait the color white is a symbol of peace so you can see in the flag which you can see here uh, it represents everything so please remember because there will be questions yeah there's a high possibility you will be getting questions what color represent what and which what are the colors in each flag so you guys have to remember so now we are going to see what is commonwealth coat of arms the commonwealth coat of arms is the official symbol of the commonwealth of australia it represents the australian national unity it identifies the authority and prosperity of commonwealth of australia there the shield is the center represent the six states and federations the kangaroo and emu support the shield on each side the kangaroos are native australian animals and emus are native australian birds the gold commonwealth star 
sits above the shield. The background is the golden water, which is Australia's national flower. So you guys have to remember what is coat of arm, what does it represent, and what is this specific. And again, I will tell you, Australia's national flower is golden water, and these small trees grow mainly in southeastern Australia. Remember that these flowers grow in southeastern Australia because there could be a question. I can remember. Yep. So it has bright green leaves and many golden yellow flowers in spring. Each of states and territories of Australia also have its own floral emblem. And also remember, each state has its own flag. An Australian national gemstone is opal, and in Aboriginal legend. A rainbow touched the earth and created the colors of the opal. Also, I had to mention, uh, you all have to study Australian national anthem. I will put it in the description, and you have to go through it because there will be question asking from the national anthem. Okay, now I'm going to discuss about Australia's democratic belief, rights, and liberties. At the citizenship ceremony, you pledge that you share Australian democratic belief and that you respect the rights and liberties of people of Australia. Australia is a democracy. A democracy is a system of government in which citizens freely choose the representatives to govern the country and make laws on their behalf. So please remember what is democracy is. Because there can be a question asking what is democracy, and you have to choose the right answer. So the democracy is a system of government in which citizens freely choose the representatives to govern countries and make laws on their behalf. Okay, and Australians believe in peace, respect, and freedom, and equity. An important part of being Australian is respecting others' people differences and choices. Even if you don't agree with their choice, it is about treating people fairly and giving all the Australians equal opportunity to freedom, no matter where they come from, what their traditions are, or whether they are male or female. These domestic beliefs have shaped the our country, the Australia, and a culture, and are a reason why some many people want to become Australian. It is therefore very important that you understand the democratic belief and the right of liberties of the Australian people. Respect. Okay, we'll see what is parliamentary democracy. Australia's system of government is a parliamentary democracy. This means that Australians are involved in how the country is governed. The power of government comes from Australian people because Australian citizens regularly vote for the people to represent them parliament only parliament has the power to make and change the law that govern the country in a parliament democracy the representatives in parliament must answer the people through election for the decision they make so please remember that part there can be a question how the laws are made and how the decisions are made how the people are getting elected from in the parliament so now we discuss about the rule of law. Australia laws are important for people living in Australia. Australia recognizes the value of laws in maintaining peaceful and orderly society. All Australians have right to protect by Australian laws. Everyone must obey Australian laws. If they don't obey the law, they may be arrested by police and have to go to court. Also. Australians are equal under law, the law, and no person or group is above the law. Remember that phrase because that will be could be tested in the exam. This is called the rule of law. In the exam, you may see what is the rule of law. So next, I would like to talk about compassion for those in need. Compassion for those in need. In Australia, there is spread of mateship. 
This means we have a, and receive help from each other in times of need. A mate is often a friend, but can be a total stranger. A mateship might take a meet to an elderly neighbor, travel friend to a medical appointment, or visit someone who is lonely. Because of the spread of mateship, many individual people and groups help others through voluntary community work. You can also be a volunteer uh, in any part of any organization. Volunteering can be very satisfying. It also a great opportunity to share knowledge, learn new skills and increase your sense of belonging to the Australian community. Our government also supports Australian in need through the social security and other services. And now we'll see what are the freedoms Australian has. Freedom of speech and freedom of expression. Freedom of speech allows people to say and write what they think and to discuss their ideas with others. So this uh, the actual this was a question asking what are the freedom and what is the freedom of speech so you have to remember freedom of speech allows people to say and write what they think and discuss their ideas with others and secondly freedom of expression allows people to express their views thought in art film music and literature I can remember there was a question asking uh, in what is kind of expression with the express through art, film and music and literature in that student that is a freedom of expression so remember that guys so in Australia we are free to say and write what we think privately and publicly about any topic however we cannot harm others in our speech or in our expression so Australians are free to uh, uh, protest peacefully against the government decision and laws. We cannot make false allegations, encourage others to break the law or damage others' personal reputation. There are laws to protect the person's good name against false information. We are free to meet with public or private based on social political discussion. We can criticize the government peaceful protests against the government decision and campaign to change laws. We must also respect other people's freedom of speech and freedom of expression. Newspapers, television and radios have their same freedom. So freedom of association. Australians are free to join any legal organization such as a political party, shared union or religious culture or social group. People can also decide not to join. Australians can gather with other to protest against the government action or any organization. However, all protests must be within the law. This means they must be peaceful and must not injure any person or damage property. So, freedom of religion and secular government. Australia has Judeo-Christian heritage and many Australians describe themselves as Christians. Australia has public holiday on Christian days such as Good Friday, Easter Sunday and Christmas Day. So, there could be a there could there was a definite question I remember they asking Australian uh, has a public holidays so we have to remember those uh, Easter Sunday a uh, Good Friday Christmas and also you have to remember Australia has a Judeo Christian heritage Judeo Judeo or, or can I say Judeo anything you can pronounce the Christian heritage so that can be a question what is the heritage which has Australian has so that has to be Judeo Christian so however the government in Austria is secular this means that there is no official religion 
there is no official national religion again i will repeat that is a definite question you may get it uh, the government in austria is secure that means that there is no official religion so that is what you call the government in austria is secular hope is clear for you guys also people in austria are free to follow any religion they choose as long as its practice do not break Australian laws. In addition to Christianity, Buddhism, Islam, Hinduism, Judaism and many other religions as are practiced freely in Australia. Australians are free to not to follow religion. The government treats all citizens equally, whatever their religion is or belief. This mix of religions contribute to making Australia a vibrant multicultural society. So now see what equalities Australia has. So equalities in Australia, there are a number of laws in Australia that make sure a person is not treated differently to others because of their gender, race and disability or age. Equality of men and women, men and women are equal rights in Australia. It is against the law to discriminate against a person because of their gender. Both men and women have the right to make their own independent choice about personal matters such as marriage and are protected by the law from intermediation or violence. So there is a, was a question in Australia, the men and female have equal rights and opportunities. So that's a, that's a something which you can really easily remember. So both men and women have equal access to education, employment, both men and women have vote and stand parliament. Both men and women can join Australian Defence Force and the police. Men and women treated equal in court of law. In Australia, everyone deserves a fair go. This means that what someone achieves in life should be a result of their hard work and talents rather than their wealth or background. So remember there can be a question what is a fair go. So fair go is that what someone achieves in life should be a result of their own hard work and talent. Not just because of their wealth or their rich. Also, when you become an Australian citizen, you have new responsibilities and privileges. Responsibilities, as you know, as everyone in this country, you have to obey the law. And other responsibility will be vote in the federal and state territory elections and in referendum. Different Australia should the need arise. So the jury, if called to do so, a privilege is as Australian citizen, you have a right to vote the federal, state, territory elections, apply for work in Australian public service in the Australian Defence Force, seek election in the Parliament, apply for an Australian passport and re-enter Australian freely, ask for consular assistance. For from an Australian official while in overseas. Register children born overseas as Australian citizens by descent. So by now you guys might be thinking what is a jury? So in that citizen if you call to for jury you have to go for that. So that's what is a jury? So jury is a group of ordinary Australians, men and women, who listen to the evidence in a court case and decide if a person is guilty or not. So to do to, to, to call for jury, you have to be 18 years or older. So any Australian who is on a electoral roll may be called to serve on a jury. Jury service helps to make sure that the court system is open and fair. So also being a citizen, you have the privileges like working in Australian public services and the Australian Defence Force. If you're an Australian citizen, you can apply to join Australian public services 
and work for the Australian government, for example, Centrelink Medicare and Australian Taxation Office. Australian citizens also have the right to apply for a career in the Australian Defence Force, Army, Navy and Air Force. Also seek election to Parliament. Australian citizens aged 18 years or over can seek election to Parliament at the federal, state, territory level. It is both honour and serious responsibility to serve the Australia Parliament. Apply for an Australian passport and re-enter Australia freely. When you become an Australian citizen, you have the right to live and free in Australia. You have the right to apply for an Australian passport as an Australian citizen. You are freely to travel overseas and return to Australia. You do not need visa to come back to Australia when you have a passport. That is quite obvious, by the way. So, ask for consular assistance from an, Aust from an Australian official while you are in overseas. In many countries, normally you have Australian High Commission or you see Australian Embassy. So, when you oversee, you can ask for any health official in times of needs. And this includes emergencies such as civil unrest and natural disasters. Officials can also issue emergency passports and provide advice and support in the case of an accident, serious illness, or death. In another country, you must obey the laws that in that country. So register children born overseas as Australian citizens by descent. So when you become an Australian citizen, you have that uh, privilege to register your children as citizens or though they are born in a different country. So now we'll uh, talk about participating in Australian society. So Australia encourage all citizens to participate in the society. Citizens who participate in society contribute to Australia in many ways. You can join the neighborhood and local communities. You can volunteer, do social community work. You can join as art of culture organization. You can also active participate in political life. Uh, paying taxes is another important way you directly contribute to the Australian community. Tax paid out of the money you earn, whether it is from the job or the business or investment. Many of the benefits that Australia enjoys are made possible through taxes. Taxes are spent on services which include health, education, defense and road and railways and social security. By working and paying taxes, you can support the government to provide these important services to Australian community. These services help make Australia the peaceful and the prosperous country is today, state and territory. Government and local council also collect taxes to pay for their services. So this is some general information which we are going through. But it's always better to keep in mind because anytime the question can pop up in the exam when you're facing. Okay, so further you can say paying taxes is required by the law. And taxes is collected by Australian Taxation Office. There, there was a question if I remember. Yeah who call it the taxes and subsidies ATO as everyone knows Australian taxation office from both businesses and individuals. So ATO works to ensure all citizens are aware that their tax rights and obligations pay the correct amount of tax. Like every tax ending you have to settle your tax return if you are doing a job or the business. So now we are going to start the part three. This is the last part. So government and the law in australia so at the citizenship ceremony you pledge you uphold and obey the laws of australia it is important you to uh, understand australia's system of government how the laws are made in our parliamentary democracy how the laws are administrated it is also important to understand how you as a citizen will have the say and running of the country okay so how do i have my say so this can also could be a question how do i say how do i have my say so you can have your say by voting in the election as australian citizens if you are over 18 years old if you are not 18 years old you don't need to vote 
because what is compulsory in uh, australian in federal state territory and elections if you do not vote in an election you do not have a good reason in that case for not voting you will have to pay a fine uh, in victoria if i remember it is 50 dollars fine if you do not vote in election compulsory voting is a way to make sure that the people we elect are really ones that the majority of the people want so australian electoral commission aec is the commonwealth agency is kind of federal election and referendum and maintain the commonwealth electoral role uh, so australian electoral commission helps to provide vote with fair and honest uh, and to conduct the honest elections and also aec independent of the government political parties or the people in government cannot influence the decision of um, australian electoral commission votes are uh, votes done by a secret ballot so you are free and safe to vote for any candidate no one else sees who you vote for you can tell other people who you vote for but no one can force you to tell them so raising matters with your representatives in australia you have the right to raise the matters that concern you with your elected representative so your views may then be taken into consideration by parliament when it's considering new laws or changes to existing laws for example if you have a suggestion about how to improve the immigration system you can make an appointment to discuss it with your local member of parliament then you can have uh, you, you can also write a letter outlining your views in this way ordinary australian can have their say in forming law uh, policies of a government so how did we establish our system of government okay so how did australia establish the government so federation so before 1900 i mentioned this before 1901 austria was named i mean made up of six separate self governing british colonies with its borders each colony had its own constitution and own laws related to defense defense immigration postage and trade and transport so people wanted to unite the colonies to form a single australian nation for a number of reasons trade transport between the colonies was expensive and slow enforcing law across the borders was difficult the separate colonies also had weak system of defense more importantly australian national identity was beginning to form sporting teams were representing australia internationally and unique australian culture was developing in popular songs poems and stories art united nations was difficult task but over a period of time the idea of australia nation became a reality australians are proud of fact that the nation did not emerge through a revolution or the bloodshed by negotiation and referendum they did it so on january on 1st of january 1901 the colonies were united into federation of states called commonwealth of australia okay in next we are going to talk about this australian constitution so the on commonwealth of australia constitution act uh, 1900 is the legal document that sets out the basic rules of the government of australia the australian constitution was originally passed as a part of british at parliament in 1900 on 1st january 1901 when the constitution took effect the australian colonies became one independent nation of the commonwealth of australia so there is going to be a question as i mentioned earlier so when these colonies became one is take 
may take into effect on 1st January 1901. So Australian constitution established a parliament of Commonwealth of Australia created with the House of Representatives and Senate. The constitution also established High Court of Australia which has the power to apply interpret the law of Australia. So you have to remember the High Court of Australia has the power to apply and interpret the law of Australia. So that's the part of High Court because there can be a question. Hope you even you can go back to audio and uh, find again which is High Court has the right to power to apply and interpret the law of Australia. So the Australian constitution can only be changed through a special vote called referendum. Yes, there is a question and um, maybe you get a question. So because I remember it's coming for me. So the Australian constitution can be only be changed through a special vote called referendum. So remember that refer to the referendum, Australia constitution can be changed. So in a referendum, there need to be a double majority for the Australian constitution to be changed. That's also remember there should be double majority for the Australian constitution to be changed. This means that the majority voters in the majority of states and majority of the voters across the nation must vote for the change. So it's a must to vote for the federal referendum if you are an Australian citizen. So how is the power of government control? The Australian constitution divides the power between three arms of government. This is, this is top one person or one group of people taking over all the powers govern Australia. So these three major powers you have to remember there can be a question which are legislative powers, executive powers, judicial powers. So let's see what is legislative power. The parliament has the power to make the change, the laws. Parliament is made up of representative who are elected by people of Australia. Executive power. Executive power is the power to put the law into practice. The executive includes Australian government ministers and government governor general. Each minister is responsible for one or more government department. So that is a minister is responsible for one or more government departments and he has got executive powers including governor general. So judicial power, the judge judges have the power to interpret and apply the law. Courts and judges independent of parliament and government. So as I mentioned earlier in previously. So again I will focus on what is legislative power. If I further the part of parliament has the power to make and change the law. So that is a legislative power. So remember these three powers definitions and what is uh, being mentioned. Because it could be questions individually as well. And those are the three powers uh, which can govern, which control the country basically. So who is also head of state? So head of state is the queen of Australia, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. In Australia, the Queen does not have day-to-day -day royal government. The Queen appoints the Governor General as a representative in Australia on advice from Australian Prime Minister. The Governor General acts independently of the political parties. In each of these states, states there is a governor who represents the queen in each row that is similar to the governor general. I will repeat that. Don't get confused between this. In each state, or the each state or in all the states, there is a person called governor general who represents the queen in row, in row that is similar to the governor general. So in each state you have a governor not a governor general okay governor whole governor general represent the country as queen so and each state has its own governor 
So, we will see the constitutional monarchy. So, what is this constitutional monarchy? Austria is a constitutional monarchy. Uh, it is a country which the, which a king or queen is the head of state, but it has to act in accordance with the constitution. So, Australia is a constitution monarchy because the head is a queen or a king. So, Australian system of parliament democracy was based on the British system developed over many centuries. In the Australian system, the leaders of the Australia government is the prime minister okay now we'll see the role of governor general who represent the queen so what he has to do or she signs the bill passed by the Australian Parliament into law this is called royal assent remember there can be a question asking what is the royal assent so royal assent is a signs a bill passed by Australian Parliament into law so this is done by governor general and signs the regulations perform ceremonial duties approves appointment of australian government and ministers fellow judges and other officials governor general also has special powers known as reserve powers that can only be used in specific circumstances so who are some australian leaders Head of state, the Queen of Australia, the Governor General. state in Australia. So, who is governor? Governor representative of the head of each state in Australia. Or you can say the governor is a representative of the head of state in each state in Australia or in each Australian state. So, it is you have to just remember in each state there is a governor. Who separately represent the roles of the Queen. Okay, so who is the Premier? Premier is the leader of the state government. Example at the moment, Victoria's Premier is Dan Andrews, who is from the Labour Party. So that's our uh, Premier in uh, Victoria. 
okay who is the chief minister so the leader of the territory government is called the chief minister so difference is the uh, in each state the the leader is called the premier in territory the leader is called the chief minister so that's the difference so you have to remember that the difference of premier and minister so again i will repeat in territories you have chief minister and in states you have minister okay so now we look at who is the government minister is a a member of parliament chosen by the government to leader to be responsible for an area of government for example sports uh, finance and those uh, areas and who is the senator and a senator is an elected representative of a state or a territory in the australia parliament mayor or shy president who is mayor or shy president the leader of a local council will be known as a mayor or a shy president the council an elected member of the local council so guys remember those stuff that is questionable in the citizenship exam so we'll see now how is australia governed australian government okay so australian government is also called as federal government or the commonwealth government the australian parliament has two houses which is house of representative and the senate the member of both houses are directly elected by the australian people at the federal election so when you vote in the federal election you usually elect the representative to each house so hope you guys clear with that so the house of representative who are this house of representatives they are sometimes called the lower house or the people house so house of representative also called lower house or the people house and they are divided into federal electorates australia is actually australia is divided into federal electorate and also in each electorate vote for the one person to represent them in the house of representatives this representative is called the member of parliament or the mps so those are the member of parliament so you can say this representatives are the member of parliament in other words so number of mps for each state and territory is based on the size its population the people of australia elect the total 150 members to the house of representatives i will repeat that Australia elect total of 150 members to the House of Representatives. So remember that number. So the important work of the House of Representatives is consider debate and vote on proposals of the new laws changes to the laws. Members of the House representatives also discuss the matters national importance so that's the job they do okay you can uh, go back and repeat my uh, explanation of them because that's important for your exam so we we'll say who is the senate the senate is sometimes called upper house the house of Re review or the state house i will with the senate is also called upper house and the house of review or the state house remember those three terms that can be questionable in the citizenship exam so the states are equally represented in senate regardless of the population size there are 12 representatives elected from each state both mainland territories elect two representatives each there are 76 representatives elected in total 
and they are called Senate. So in Senate you have total 76 and previous I was talking about what? House of Representatives you have 150. So remember the two different numbers down there. Also you make sure in Senate each state represents with 12 and each uh, territory you have uh, two representatives each from each territory. So total adds up to 76 representatives in the Senate. Please keep that in mind that is there is an obvious chance of getting a questions in that part. Okay. So the state and territory government. The, the six states and two mainland territories in Australia. Each state has its own constitution and its own parliament. Remember that. Each state has its own constitution and own parliament. Each state and territories government based in the capital cities. The leader of the state government is the premier and the leader of the territory government is chief minister. So I repeat those again. So you remember it. Eastern government operate in similar way of Australian government. In each state government representatives go in Australia. In Northern Territory, and the administrator appointment by the Governor General. The role and the responsibilities of the administrator are similar to those in state governors. So I can recall that in states you have a governor. And in territories you have administrator. So if you have any question in this, feel free to comment below. I can explain further. Okay. So as with Australian government people to elect representatives for the area, these representatives become members of the state or territory parliament. Okay, so now we'll see what is local government. So the local government, the state and the northern territories are divided into local government areas. The major called cities, shires, towns, municipalities. Each area has its own local council. Councils are responsible for planning, delivering services to their local community. Citizens each local government area want to elect their local council. So hope you guys still remember that that also could be questionable and yes I can remember there was as well. So what to the three levels of government to do? So what do the what do the three levels of government to do? Okay, we'll see what are three levels. The first one Austrian government is responsible for taxation, national economic management, immigration and citizenship, employment, portal services and communication, social security, defense threat, airport and air safety. So that is very cool to air safety as well. That is, um, and so airports also, also coming under government. Um, and finally, this foreign affairs that is retention with other countries. State and territory governments are responsible for hospital and health services, schools, railways, roads, and road traffic controls, forestry, police, and public transport. So, those are the responsible for. Um, states in territory and government like for example like uh, i can tell you like uh, victoria police and uh, uh, pvt that is public victoria transport services um, and victoria education department that those are all uh, private those are all state this belongs to state governments those are so like that and we'll see what is local government uh, like responsibilities not they're in charge of uh, 
so the local government is like street signs traffic controlling local roads footpaths bridges trains parks playgrounds swimming pools sport grounds camping grounds the caravan parks food uh, and meat inspection noise animal control rubbish collection local libraries horse community centers uh, child care and aged care issues building per permit social planning local environment issues so those are responsible of local government in each states and uh, territories so some okay this now i'm going to something very crucial which is also can be very questionable some responsibilities are shared between the various level of government the council of australian government which is known as coag council of australia government has been set up to encourage cooperation between the level of government so this council of australia government has been set up to encourage cooperation between the level of government so please remember that that is questionable as well okay so what role do the political parties play in the way australian government political party is group of people who share the similar ideas how country should be governed they work together to have their party ideas turn into laws and the main political parties of australia are the australian labor party the liberal party australian national and australia green so those are the major parties in australia so in Australia, you are free to join any political party if you choose. Okay, now we'll see how is the Austrian government is formed. So after an election, the political party or the coalition parties with the majority of members in the House of Representatives forms the Australian government. And the leader of this party is become the leader of the Australia government, who is known as the prime minister for example our current prime minister is scott morrison so that's our prime minister so the party or the coalition of parties with the second largest number of members in the house of representatives is known as the opposition is the leader call is the opposition leader so after that the prime minister chose the member of parliament party members of the parliament or the senators to become ministers ministers are responsible for the important areas in government and they call portfolios such as employment indigenous affairs and treasury own finance and stuff so minister with the most senior portfolios make up the cabinet remember that which is the key decision making body of the australian government and now we are going to look at uh, how our laws are made australian citizens of Australia elect the people to represent them in the australian parliament the australian parliament make and change the laws to benefit the nation the member of Australian Parliament proposed the new law or changes the law. This proposal is called a bill. The House of Representatives and the Senate consider debate, debate and vote whether they agree with the bill. After that, if the majority of members in the each House of Parliament agrees the bill, it goes to the Governor General to sign it and when the governor general signs the bill it becomes the law this called the royal assent so so how was law made i was talking about how was the law made in australia so the parliament makes changes laws and benefit the nation so there are four steps remember that there are four steps in making the law which i mentioned earlier so finally state and territory parliaments make their own laws so 
So again, it will be the state and territory parliaments make their own laws. So now we see how the laws are administrated. The court is, um, you know, the court in Australia are responsible for interpreting and applying the law. Uh, and they are independent of the government. The courts decided if a person has broken the law or not and decide the penalty. Even the person has the right to be represented by the law in courts. Courts can be only based on the decision on the evidence before them. And other things about judges and magistrates. Uh, the judges or the magistrate is the highest authority in the court system. And judges and magistrates are independent and no one can tell them what to decide. And that's their own decisions. Judges and magistrates are appointed by the government, but the government cannot take their jobs away if it disagrees with their decision. Okay, finally, I'm going to talk about some important uh, words which you will have to remember the definitions to answer these multiple choice questions in the citizenship exam. So, what is civil unrest? This demonstrate and uh, and riots by large number of people usually protesting against the government decision or policies and what is coalition previous i talked about the word coalition if you remember that's the joining of two or more political parties usually from government or opposition so what is commission the group of people with the official responsibilities and next, what is constitution monarchy? If you remember, a country in which king or queen is the head of state, that is constitutional monarchy. So, what is the court? Is a place where legal cases are being heard and judge magistrate. Uh, what is criminal trial? Hearing of affairs by the court decide in a person is guilty or not guilty if an alleged crime. So, what is democracy? Government by the people through elected representatives. Uh, what is economic depression? A form of domestic violence where the one partner is in a relationship prevents the other partner from receiving or handling money. So what's the election? is an event where citizens choose the person to represent them in parliament. Electoral role, the list of people entitled to vote in an election to or a referendum. Enforce the law means to make sure the person follow the law. Executive power, the power that authority to administrate the law, one of the three powers under the Australian Constitution. For example, Australian government ministers and the Governor General have the executive power to administrate the law and made the Australian par by the Australian Parliament. Federation is a union of colonies into nations and colonies retaining the certain powers. Example, in 1901, colonies were united into federation called Commonwealth of Australia. So it's a federation. First fleet is the 11 convict ships came to the came from Britain with Captain Arthur Pelix on 26 January 1788, which is known as First Fleet as well. So, Foral Emblem is the national flower. Australia national flower is Gordon Wallet. Um, also, there are three more, four more. There are forced isolation, four more. Of domestic violence where one partner is in a relationship control who the other partner sees and talk to what they read and where they go and from this time forward means from now and in the future icon means a well-known image for example sydney uh, is famous for opera house it was a national icon and that's a, other one is the bridge and so indigenous people are the original inhabitants of the land. So and a Judeo Christian is the both Jewish and Christian religions. So those that that's so I hope you guys remember that. Uh so let me so there was something uh to remember more, okay, about Jude what is to the judicial power, the power and authority to interpret and apply the laws, one of the three powers under the Australian Constitution. 
legislative power, the power and authority to make the change of laws and one of three powers under a game or some constitution. What are the meaning of liberty, a person, freedom and independence? Magistrate is the judge of a law court. Mateship is helping and receiving help from others, especially in difficult times. And uh, Parliament democracy, the system of government based on the regular election represented to Parliament by the citizen. And Parliament resident, sorry, permanent resident, you know who the permanent resident is. Uh, political party, you know, public service, yep. and referendum, I will repeat, the referendum is a vote by all voters on the proposal to change the Australian constitution to source, to change the cons Australian constitution, you need a referendum. And what is review means? Review, to consider the proposal for a new law and decide whether to accept or reject it. Uh, secret ballot, you know, that's for voting to privately. What is circular? The separate from religion. Uh, Shire is a local government area. Uh, yep, so that's it, guys. So that's everything I have covered uh, for the Australian citizenship exam. If you have any questions, anything please comment below i will answer immediately as possible soon as possible i'll be answered so i wish every one of you uh best of luck to pass the exam hope you guys can get 100 out of 100 and thank you so much for listening feel free to comment if you have anything and i will do it for you thank you and wish you again all the best